The world of sports has strived to include global cultures for as long as we can remember. One of the most attractive things about modern sports is its diversity and openness to people from all corners of the world. Today we see a variety of international efforts to unite and bond through sports, but while watching the 2018 Masters Golf Tournament, it was apparent that the sport of golf is not as diversified or accepting as others. Golf has always been a white man's game due in part to how the media reinforces the sport's segregated background. The game has systematically excluded people on the basis of gender, race, and class, which is evident from the Masters roster list alone. While scrolling through the list, there are hardly any other races besides whites and Asians that are represented except for about one, Tiger Woods. This realization is supported by the 2016-2017 NCAA golf demographic statistic, with there being 81.5% of white and Asian golfers combined, while there were only 1.9% black golfers. You would think by now that the Masters would have a more inclusive roster showing that they are making advertisements for minorities in sports. But since there have only been 28 black golfers ever invited on the PGA Tour, golf amplifies its exclusivity and brings to light its racist and segregated history that is yet to be fixed. Even when we do see minorities playing golf, like O.J. Simpson in the documentary Watched in Class, and other famous athletes like Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley, they play with successful affluent white men and choose to neglect their African-American background in order to assimilate to white culture. This has even been shown in Hollywood movies like Space Jam, where Michael Jordan can be seen golfing with a strictly white company. Starsky and Hutch, where Snoop Dogg is ordered to caddy rather than participate, and Undercover Brother, where the actors are portrayed as being a menace to the game and a disruption to the course. This shows that the media reiterates the notion that golf is a white man's game by showing minimal minorities playing golf or minorities not abiding by the proper golf etiquette. The more we see the media, and Hollywood specifically, continue to produce similar content, the more we realize how the Old South mentality never lost its hegemonic place in the sport. In addition, the media has also slut-shamed women who are provocatively dressed on the course. Paige Spiernak, a famous golf media personality, fell victim to slut-shaming for her choice in clothing, sparking controversy on a national scale. After ABC News, CBS News, and various other news sources intensified the issue, many people, including Paige, took to social media their opinions on the matter of the LGPA's new stricter dress code for its players. Posting tweets reading, untucked shirts and clothes that don't fit too tight or loose should be added, because I think that looks unprofessional as well too. Many women are fighting back and arguing that these dress codes interfere with their personal lives and are standing up for their right to wear what they want to on the course. Because this dress code only applies to women and is enforced in the LGPA, this further augments how golf is sexist and how the sport is doing quite the opposite in terms of changing its stance on women in the sport. The segregation also seeps into the people that surround the sport. Announcers and commentators for sports like the NFL and NBA have somewhat of a diverse makeup, but that is not seen within golf. From the host of Inside the NBA and Fox NFL Kickoff, it's evident how diverse these hosts are. When compared to hosts and commentators from the Golf Channel, for example, all you see is older white men commentating on gameplay, reporting statistics, and voicing their opinions, which hasn't changed in years. Golf media certainly has a more conservative and higher standard it strives to meet in terms of its personnel's behavior and dialect compared to other sports. As long as the media continues to hire strictly older white men to be associated with golf, the sport will remain segregated. Lastly, the media exalts the classist stigma behind the sport by incorporating advertisements and sponsorships from some of the world's most prestigious brands into the game. From Mercedes-Benz being the official sponsor of the Masters, to automobile, credit card, and jewelry ads placed between content, all these commercials magnify the fact that golf is a sport meant for the privileged. Expensive brands like Titleist, Callaway, Under Armour, and Nike are present in media outlets like the Golf Channel and are proof of the higher appreciation for upper echelon brands. In contrast, the products being placed in sports like the NBA include Kia, Chick-fil-A, Fitbit, Stit Farm, and Sprite, all which pertain to a more everyday consumer rather than the upper class. From a recent Nielsen report, 87% of golf viewers are white while 7% are black, compared to a more equal NBA viewership of 45% blacks and 40% whites. Therefore, as the media continues to define the line between the upper class and the middle to lower classes with its purposeful ad placement, it's hard to see the sport of golf as anything but marginalizing. It is painstakingly obvious how discriminatory this sport is, and by associating golf with wealth, success, whiteness, and masculinity, the sport purposely draws a line between the white affluent man and the underprivileged minority. This line acts as a barrier to prevent those deemed not worthy from partaking in the sport in hopes of maintaining its old southern roots.